Hi, okay, so I just finished the Old Testament and I'm pretty excited about that. Again, I've, I've read the Old Testament before, but this time I listened to it auditory version, which is kind of exciting for me because I've really been into auditory books lately with all these different positive thinking auditory books and now the scriptures. So um, here are some of my takeaways that I got from reading the Old Testament this last few months. Um, or listening to the Old Testament. Did you know that Noah was 500 years old when he got his mission call to build the ark? And that caught, took him 100 years to build. Wow. And then I thought about it. They were on the ark for over a year, one year and two days to be exact. And he took two animals of every kind except the sacrificial ones. He took seven. I thought, you know, what would Noah or what would Noah say to his kids when they, you know, I have some good news for you and some bad news for you. We're going to build an ark and we're all going to be saved when it rains. But the bad news is, is you're on cleanup duty. <laughs> Like, oh my goodness. I also have a joke because I have a lot of grandkids, so I tell jokes. Um, did you know that Noah was one of the best financial advisors in the Bible? Because he kept his stock up while everyone else was in liquidation. <laughs> anyway, then there was Lot. Okay, Lot uh, had faced his tent towards the evil city. And uh, and his his wife had turned around, you know, they were all escaping. The angels were helping them escape this city and they were escaping the city. And then Lot's wife turned back to go back and she turned into a pillar of salt, which is another Bible joke where she was the first woman driver because Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt, you know, turned anyway. So, um, th those are just some funny things, but get this. Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom, and he also gave him riches and power. I have to read this because I did the math. Solomon was one rich guy. Okay, um, it would have spent $1 billion just for the cedar to build Solomon's temple. A billion. His paycheck every year was $8,741,250,000. Just did the math on the current currency today as opposed to what their gold was and shekels were back then. Solomon paid for it with a city, but the guy didn't like the city he was giving him, so he paid him cash. Interesting. He had one city specialized for each thing. So one city specialized in charge of shipbuilding. One was in charge of horse training. I typed this up a little bit so that I could read it. Uh, he One was for shipbuilding. One was for horse training. One was for chariots. One made the navy. Uh, and the Queen of Sheba was amazed. Now, the Queen of Sheba was very wealthy. She was the second wealthiest woman in the world. And she was amazed at the wealth of Solomon because she said it even exceeded the rumors that she had heard. A chariot would have been about $5,000. And a horse would have been about $1,200. And anyway, he was very wealthy. And he, it was kind of amazing what he did. He did a lot of really wonderful things to take care of his people and give them work get them jobs. You know, nobody was unemployed. <laughs> anyway, um, I love, you know, the gospel means good news. And you can listen to the bad news or you can read the good news. So to read the Old Testament is, or any scriptures, is wonderful because it gives you a paradigm uh, that where your perspective starts the day. I always like to start it in the morning with my daily rituals of power prayer, reading the scriptures, positive thinking, you know, doing my I am statements. And, and reading the scriptures really helps me put into paradigm that we are in God's hands and we're okay. We're, we're going to be okay. Because you could get really depressed if you read the other news. Um, one thing that was interesting to me is everything in the Old Testament and all and the scriptures in general talk about two things. The, the prophets would prophesy of two things. One was Jesus Christ, the atonement and the plan of salvation. And two, they saw our day. And these scriptures were compiled, saved for our day. Okay, it's interesting because as Isaiah was talking about our day, he saw it in a vision, but he didn't know how to explain it to the people of his day or even how to write it down because, you know, to according to what he knew. So I typed up a few things that he said. Neither is there any end of their chariots. 
I'm sure he saw all of our cars on rush hour traffic. Wow, he was probably amazed. Look at all those chariots. What else would he call them? He didn't know they were named cars. Uh, women make a tinkling with their feet. I own high heels. I make a tinkling with my feet. I know. They have a lot of changes of apparel. Okay, I mean, well, look at our closets. We just have tons of changes of apparel. And back in the day, they only had one outfit for church. They had one outfit for work, one outfit for school, and one outfit for sleep. So most people only had four or five outfits. That was it. And nowadays, people have hundreds of changes of outfits, you know. Um, and that was unusual to him, that they had a lot of changes of apparel. Like, wow, you know. Then... Um, they rise up in the morning to follow strong drink. That's alcoholism. Um, they call good evil and evil good. Well, that happens a lot. I mean, if you think about it in the biblical sense, like some of our movies, like 007, he's a hero. Like everybody likes to see his movies, but he has a license to kill and sleep with women. I mean, you know, according to his day, that's calling evil good. And there, there you go. They, they have a lot of false advertising and also movies where bad guys are good guys. Um, though, well, I just said that with that. Um, horses look like flint and wheels like a whirlwind. That, that would sound like a train to me. Their horse's hooves look like flint and their wheels are like a whirlwind. Rem thinks of a train. And then the birds in the sky are roaring like young lions that lay hold of prey. That sounds like planes. Then also they said men's sins would be shouted from the rooftops, which sounds like a TV antenna and the nightly news. So for him, he was describing our day. Now, back in the day, now I'm listening to the scriptures auditory, so I feel like, yay, I got the Old Testament done. That's the biggest book. In our, in our religion, we ha and I respect everybody's religions, all their opinions and all their things, um, but in our religion, we have five scriptures that we are to read. The Pearl of Great Price, which is like the Old Testament, only it's a, another papyra that was interpreted um, of Abraham and Moses. And then we have the Old Testament, the New Testament. And then we have the Doctrine and Covenants, which is, uh, which is revelations to our prophets for how our church should run and, and that so forth. And then we have the Book of Mormon, which is another testament of Jesus Christ that was... Uh, plates that were brought over by a prophet from Israel to the Americas and then their stories about living in the Americas. So that's, that's uh, another testament of Jesus Christ. In that book, back in the day, I figured out that I could read all five of those books in one year, 365 days, if I just did seven pages a day. So I sought out in January 1st to read all five standard works in one year which was seven pages a day. And I actually ended up at December 10th or something because some days you can't put it down because you're right in the middle of a story. So it's pretty exciting. Um, but it's, it was really interesting because I learned so much about the prophets and I got to know them and I felt like I knew them and it was really awesome. I, I, that was a really good year. And in that particular year, I ended with the Book of Mormon and there was a prophet named Moroni, and his dad was Mormon. He's the one that abridged the scriptures. That's why it was called after him. And, and uh, they're in a battlefield at the very end of the book where all of their brothers and friends and cousins and everybody's been killed. They're in war. The Lamanites and the Nephites are at war. And they're all just killing each other off. Mormon and Moroni are big guys, and they're up at the top of this mountain, and they, they said the smell was terrible. They could smell all the death. And in the far distance, they could see the Lamanites were coming to kill off anybody that had survived, any of the survivors that had been injured or wounded or hadn't left. They were just coming down to kill them. Well, Mormon had been injured, and so he couldn't walk on his own, and he was at the top of this mountain, and he had been injured. And... Moroni, they had the plates with them because they carried them everywhere. They, they're heavy, but they had these heavy plates with them that were the records of the people. And I could feel the Spirit so strongly talking about how I could just see the scene opening up where Moroni is going, Dad, look, they're coming, they're coming, they're going to kill everybody, they're going to kill you. Let me carry you to the nearby cave over here and we'll hide out. 
And he said, no, you have to take those plates. There are people in the last days that need the scriptures. They need these plates. They have to have them. Their souls depend on it, son. You have to save these people. Go take the plates and go hide in the, in the cave. And he said, but dad, I could save you. No, no, no. The plates are more important. There's millions of people you have to save. No, you've got to go. So he takes those very heavy plates into the mountain and he watches as they kill his father. And the point is that the scriptures were made for us to read in the last days. It's important. Many people sacrifice their lives, not just those prophets, but in the Old Testament and the New Testament. There were prophets, apostles, and disciples who, who sacrificed their lives so you could have these books to read, to learn, to know God, to learn about the author, to learn Jesus. And if you read them, if you don't read them, their sacrifice was in vain. And I would hope that everybody could take time. There's Bibles in every hotel room. There's, there's uh, easy ways to get the scriptures. They're online now, I mean, everywhere on the internet. So I would just hope that hopefully you got a takeaway from this and that perhaps you would like to read some scriptures in the daytime and maybe I could help you with that because they have made a difference in my life. They help me to be positive. They help me to get through any trials. They help me to feel good and to know my Savior. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.